Okay, so I'm so Mandy. I'm so glad you're here and to hear about your project with Saving Miss America. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is the name of the the project. Yes, and yeah, I'm very involved uh, with the beauty pageants. I'm a former Mrs. America or Mrs. Florida America, actually, mm -hmm. but we host the um, Mrs. America here now and Mrs. World, and we also hosted um, the Miss America pageant girls at our house in Orlando, Florida, our big mansion, and and here at Westgate Resorts. And when I heard about you and your project, I was so excited um, to meet with you here. I'm so excited. Can you tell me more about your your project that you're working on? Absolutely. Well, first off, I'm, I'm so excited to be here with you. And um, it feels sort of fortuitous that I was put in touch with you. Um, that's been some of, you know, the big part of the mission of this project is connecting with new people um, in the pageant world that have these intricate past, you know, and experiences mm -hmm. and being able to highlight on them. So to, to get to meet you and, and to find out that you have all of this experience, not only in the pageant world, but with Miss America, um, I'm excited to incorporate that into the document. Um, so I've been doing it for the last year and a half. Yeah. Um, I, I started it when there were a bunch of changes going on in the program, and I was inspired by you know women kind of speaking out to um, to try to better the, the future of the program. Um, and in that, I realized um, I, I started looking at my own experience and wondering why I didn't always share that with the public about you know my pageant past and and yeah. all of the good that it did for me. Um, and so I just started talking to you know friends that I knew that yeah. competed in the pageant world and, and interviewing them um, and wanting to really understand what their experience was to broaden the outside perception. So yeah. ultimately that has led me to you to also hear your intricate journey of competing and how you know pageants have, have bettered your life and your world and and I even think we're going to expand beyond Miss America in in ways you know while Miss America is the symbol what everybody knows there is this whole pageant industry out there that um, I'm beginning to learn a lot more about um, and I see what they're doing in the present day. So. And the one thing I have um, doing the Mrs. America so once the girls have already gotten married but they're still beautiful and love the pageant system and, and everything we have another home for the next stage in their lives. That's so cool. I mean, you know? may maybe I'll be inspired to compete yeah, for Mrs. Gotta, we, California. Yeah, we need your wife to enter yeah. the pageant. Well, I, the, the pageant bug has kind of bit me again with this film. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> you should enter, you know. Well, it's you fun. Better, I, well, I um, didn't even know that Miss, Mrs. United States was happening this you know, this weekend, so I'm, I'm excited to explore. And well, um, but the Mrs. America um, is actually the um, August 24th. Oh, the, okay. So got if it. you want to come back for that, okay. you definitely let me know. Right, okay. I will. Yes, I'll definitely let you know. And then I'm excited about our interview here, and um, I kind of need some, like, want to go through, like, a little bit of my wardrobe and and touch up my makeup. There you go. Okay. So I don't know what to wear for my interview. Um, well, this might be too sexy. Yes. <laughs> that might be too but sexy. it is Vegas. But it is. You're right. Maybe that's for later. Yes. Or for a different interview. Oops. Yes. So um, keep this in mind for later. Okay. Okay. That's Maybe with, like, a little jacket. And then I've got this gown. That's very pretty. I think I could wear something like this for okay. the interview. Yeah, that could, could be really for flattering. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice color. And I brought like a little bit of everything, and then I also have like a a business suit. Yes. <laughs> oh, the light. Maybe there's a maybe it's Elvis Presley. It there is. There you a, go. Maybe. Oh my God, it's Elvis Presley's 50th anniversary. That's why I'm here yes, in and town he's in Las here, Vegas. Right? Yes. This is where he used to stay yeah. when he was This performing. is where he used to well, stay? Um, yeah, in well, this room. Well, these uh, rooms. Actually, it's, it's just oh, right, yeah, right yeah. above right this above room. Right above here, but yes. he also was in this room, too. So that, that might be his favorite. There you go. <laughs> Maybe. So which one did he click on? The, uh, the gown or this <laughs> I, one? Yeah, when I you said this, this, this actually was... <laughs> or this one. <laughs> would you save that for dinner? <laughs> okay. The blue one, I think, is, I think um, okay. is the one... one Because the collar... The blue it's so good in your it pulls the color from your eyes. Yeah, this one. Yeah. And, and then I just want to powder my face real quick for yes. the um, the interview out here. Yes, let's do it. All right. So we can. Yeah, you keep shooting. Or does he want to shoot in the mirror, maybe? Yeah, because he's gonna see the reflection of the mirror, so he has to. All right. How much more makeup should I put on? You don't need a lot. You look good. Mm -hmm. I'm okay? You're okay. He's going to, with the bow tie, and yeah, it's yeah. a proper butler. Yeah. 
it's a rough, he's a rough life. Right? But I'm so busy. I mean, I would cook the food myself. I just don't have time. <laughs> oh, there's Gordy. There's yes, need. Gordy. Hey. Yes. I need you. Yes, Gordy. You need me. <laughs> yeah, tell Jackie how you've been talking to all this. Are you ready for me? Station, yeah. so. No, I just kind of been pre-pitching yeah. that this is going to be coming up and letting them know so that, you know, right. we'll get, once we're ready, we'll get that going, you know. That's fantastic. Fabulous. And then we go do this interview for real quick and then okay. we'll catch up. All right. So I've been asked by the infamous Cal Marshall to come and interview Jackie and to interview David on their foundation on Victoria Siegel and um, really just to dive in on the topic of opioid addiction and really understanding how these two are helping to make a big impact in not only our community here in Southern Nevada, but our nation as a whole. I love my husband so much because he's my support system. He's got me through the loss of our dog, the children, younger, like in middle school, so we can save their lives. This guy over here, here's some of the, I thought, that, I thought he was spraying some mosquitoes. <laughs> and I just went cave diving yesterday with my kids, or cave exploring, yeah. and yeah, we were spraying the, the bug spray because we had to hike through a jungle to get to the cave. So I think that's like the first thing we came to my hand. I think, oh my God, the mosquitoes followed me. You know? Yeah. Something else. Okay, David, you need a minute? Mm -hmm. You're fine? <laughs> For the, the, you know, the dragons. The, the um, Komodo dragons? Or? Oh, no, no, not the Komodo dragon, thank God. Although we have some small like, I don't know those. Beard dragons. Bearded dragons, yes. Anyway, we spend more money on dog food and bird food. And, and, and crickets. And, and crickets than we did on our feeding our other children. Whew. So I just had an hour and a half long interview with um, some people um, interviewing me about the Victoria's Voice Foundation, about our Victoria's Voice book, and also about the Princess of Versailles, the movie that, we, that I made about... Um, losing our daughter and how it affected us and our family. So if anyone wants to see the um, Princess of Versailles movie, they can go to therealqueenofversailles.com and they can click on the Princess of Versailles, but it's also on YouTube. My YouTube channel is The Real Queen of Versailles, but if you're watching this, you're already on there, so you're the bomb and I love you. <laughs> you should go back home, go back home, go back home, go Look at the spread they're giving us. Oh my God. Um, so much for being on a diet. <laughs> well, I'll stand next to you and make you look fat. So Mitch and Bish, they're my, my two favorites. How you doing? Are you gonna be in the party tomorrow? I'm gonna be at the party tomorrow. Years. The 50 year anniversary of- I'm 40. But you're 40 years one here. Of the 40. I'm one of so, the new guys, only 30. Only 30 years, yeah. And I've only been here about 15. We'll see you later. See you later, take care. Oh, another visit. Yes. Another chance to save some lives. Yeah. All right, David, we gotta hurry. <laughs> you don't need me. Oh, I thought that was good. Oh, good. 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 I need you I can't wait. We're gonna be on TV in like half an hour. Oh. Talking about Victoria's voice and oh, the drug epidemic. Ready, honey? Okay. Nice to meet you again, sir. Gordon Prouty. Gordon, nice to see you. Nice to meet you again. Hi, I'm Mina. Hi. Mina? Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Um, if you folks will uh, follow me, we'll uh, okay. head up near the studio. And uh, staying here until it's time to come out. Okay. Um, we're going to be interviewing you guys in our 6.30 half hour, so you got a little bit of time. Um, can I get anybody anything? Waters, anything? Um, I'm good right now. Oh. Okay. So about how long do we have? Like... Uh, you probably got about 45 minutes now. Ooh, we're really yeah. early. So. Well, you said and David's like, yeah, we're going to be late, we're going to yeah. be late. I mean, it won't be, they'll take you up before that, so I'll let production know. They'll we're probably, we'll, we'll probably start getting you set up maybe 10 minutes beforehand. Okay. So. It has been 13 years ago, he was four years old, 
Yeah, and uh, I know what it's like to try to turn your horrible pain into some purpose to try to survive. So, this poor Massachusetts, Jay Gray, is our update tonight. Police and the heartache of tragic loss once again surround the Kennedy family compound. And that brings us right into tonight's edition of Nevada Addicted. We are so honored tonight to be joined by Jackie and David Siegel, and they have a story to tell. Uh, they, they've lost a loved one, their daughter, Victoria. Victoria, beautiful gal, had life by the tail, went into the spiral of addiction, and you lost her, and you are turning your pain into purpose. What needs to happen for families who are dealing with this very thing? Well, one thing, they need to buy the book that we came out with called Victoria's voice. Uh, half of it is her diary. It shows how she went from a beautiful, uh, fun-loving 14-year-old until the, uh, she became 18 and died of a drug overdose. But uh, also, uh, they they need to drug test their children because even though it takes tough love, even though the children will say, "Oh, oh I'd never use drugs," half of them are. And uh, best example, I just told a woman recently to do it, and she said, oh, my, my kid, uh, uh, my son uh, would never do drugs. She went home, she drug tested him, found out that he was doing drugs, not only uh, marijuana. You know, most of the kids start with marijuana at 14, 15, and then it, that's the gateway drug to heroin and cocaine and prescription drugs. But uh, she had no idea so until you, she drug tested him. We want to start with the information as a parent so you can go from there. Jackie, this is a very personal book. It, a lot of it are, is your daughter's entries in her diary as you watched her go through bouts of depression and some right. troubles. Can you tell us more about well, that? Well, before she died of her drug overdose, uh, she had sent a text to a friend in the event that she, well, she knew she was playing with like Russian roulette with the drugs. And um, after she passed away, her friend gave me her dying wish that I publish her journal to, um, in, in hopes to let other teenagers know that they're not alone with the peer pressure or depression and, and turning to drugs. And it's, it's pure, it's raw, it's direct um, copies of her right. diary, unedited. And it's taken me four years to actually get the strength as a parent to mm. sh share her diary. And when I found out that more people are dying today than four years ago when she died, it, I had to come out and I, do this service to the uh, country. The, well, thank the you book for doing contains it. all the information that I learned in the last four years. Four years ago, I was the most ignorant person in the world in regards to drugs. I thought uh, drug addicts lived under bridges and slept in park benches, right. but I found that the more affluent the family is, the more chance their children are doing drugs. And we should say, just quickly, we were looking at pictures of your family. You guys own Westgate Resorts, the Westgate right. uh, here in town, so yeah, it, c it can hit any family. And parents are the front line in this war. How do you start a conversation with your child when already kids don't think we're very cool when they're teenagers? Yeah. How do you break into that and have that yeah. conversation? I know, it's, it's tough love. It takes tough love. But let me tell you, tonight you let off with the story about the Kennedy uh, child. And it's all over the news, it's all over the TV and all. 200 people died today from a drug overdose. Today. 200 died yesterday, 200 will die tomorrow, every single day. You don't hear a word. There's not a word. Until a celebrity dies, and it's very unfortunate, I don't want anybody to die, you don't hear anything about it. I mean, it, it, there's a stigma to drug use, but parents, have to know, they have to know what their kids are doing. They have to know what their kids' friends are doing. And uh, they all start, they, every drug addict starts with marijuana at 14, 15, and it leads to eventually heroin or cocaine or some other. From there. Well, David drugs. and Jackie, thank you for what you're doing, uh, for giving other parents this book as a, as a guide for the, what you went through. And I'll tell you, we're doing our best here as a station well, to stay on top of this. This is an ongoing series. We, we, this, the information in this book will save a life. Victoria's Voice, and you can also watch a documentary they put out called The Princess of Versailles. It's on YouTube. It doesn't cost you anything. You'll get to see their daughter and see the aftermath of what this is for a family. Thank you so much you for so being much. here. Bless you. And Bless to David's too. point, our special series. Let's tell, let's tell them what we just did. We just did an interview on Channel 3, Las Vegas, about the drug epidemic 
and how our book, Victoria's Voice, could save a lot of lives. People need to read it and have their children read it, pass it on to other families. The information in the book, well, if I had had it four years ago, my daughter would still be alive today. Thank you. I'm, I'm so, so lucky that I've got David, you know, the love and support of my husband with my mission of saving lives too. Here we are at Westgate Resorts. Uh, we're celebrating the 50th year anniversary of the resort being here in Las Vegas. And we're taking advantage of all the people here in town by spreading the word about our Victoria's Voice Foundation, Victoria's Voice book, and, um, and really um, uh, trying to save the lives of, of many people that are addicted to drugs. And, and I'm really um, happy to be here. Oh, here comes my wonderful husband. This is the 50th year anniversary. Wow. 50 years ago. My, David came here. Tell him the quick story. I was born, I was just born 50 years ago. You know, the first time he came here, he couldn't afford to stay at this resort. First anniversary, 49 years ago. Couldn't afford to stay, and 44 years later, I bought the hotel. Go figure. That's a rags yeah. to riches story. That's the American dream. Yes. And I thought, okay, the best way to do this is to, first of all, engage everybody, entertain everyone. It takes us through the powerful statements that were made. I'm going to take a little bit of license, but I've been going through the book and Okay, so what we're doing today is my husband and I and our committee for the Victoria's Voice charity event um, that we're throwing in October. We're having a production meeting, we're having a silent auction meeting, and we're doing some basic planning and talking about what celebrities are going to be there. So this is like, um, this event is actually happening, happening and we are just so excited. Um, the community is getting involved and um, the drug czar is planning on coming. So this is going to be a real um, special event that kind of is going to introduce people to the Victoria's Voice Foundation and talk about the addiction that um, people have that are killing them. And um, it's just, it's going to be more spectacular than you can ever imagine. And I already heard that there's a lot of press people that are going to be there that want to cover the event. I really think it's going to be a na nationwide story and, and I'm very grateful that, for that and I really love Victoria and I know she's going to be looking down on us. We're going to do um, a possible butterfly release and if not that then we're going to do butterfly confetti at the event and it's going to be top-notch first class and I'm excited. It's going to happen.